Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. Uh, today's focus, uh, or today's video, will focus on using Stellarium for, uh, Im for image capturing planning. Um, I use Stellarium all the time to prepare for, uh, or, pre or I use it all the time in an effort to prepare to image a certain object that I want to image in the night sky. And Stellarium does a great job helping me hone uh, a, an object uh, that I, a, a prospective object based on, you know, where it is in the sky. And so without any further ado, let me go ahead and launch St uh, Stellarium. Stellarium is here. Uh, but real quick before I do, I, I just want to let you know, if you're new to Stellarium, um, all you have to do is you Google Stellarium and it comes up like this. Now Stellarium is free. It does not cost a dime. Um, so just wanted to, to let you know that. And once you bring up the website, you'll, you, you can see the, the latest version right here, which is 0.20.2 which is a long way from where I started with 0 0.15 or 16 um, a couple two or three years ago it's just it's they're constantly updating it and making improvements also on the Stellarium page are these cool um, links that connect you with other astronomers other astrophotographers you know whether it's someone doing visual astronomy or astrophotography astronomy um, it, there's a lot of good new information here or about um, you know the latest releases of Stellarium system requirements are down here talk this is where you can find about about the developers uh, Stellarium on, is on, also on Twitter and uh, you know all these cool uh, articles here or uh, these these are the features I should say of Stellarium right here outlined in this section of their web page now to download Stellarium you just got to choose the operating system you're running uh, typically I think you're either going to be running a Windows 64 type of a bit type of system or a Mac OS type of system uh, I run Windows 10 Pro on this computer so I would download it here and it's pretty straightforward um, all you do is click it you, and then it installs and and then what happens after it installs well let me open up Stellarium first of all after it opens up it it looks like this you are going to need to um, I like to adjust my windows in here. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to set your location. Okay, uh, you can either do that by putting in your city here and then uh, having it set to that city. That will give Stellarium a rough idea of where you are. But I think the more precise, precisely Stellarium knows where you are, the better. It gives you shows you on the map here where you are. Okay, I'm in North America. I'm in Virginia, North Northern Virginia. But you want to uh, hone a precise location using your current location information. And for wherever you are, it's a good idea to plug in your latitude and longitude settings. And that can be done by, you know, Googling your coordinates to wherever you are. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and close this out because that's uh, really, I'm thinking about doing a whole video on installation and setup of Stellarium. But for right now, uh, I want to show you how I use Stellarium to plan an imaging session. So the first thing I do is um, I click the date and time window right here. And after after you do that this box comes up right here as you can see my current time is 1241 in the afternoon but I want to know what the sky looks like around starting at about 8 o'clock so that's 20 hundred hours in, in the 24-hour clock system uh, oh 
I'm sorry, that would be 20, 20 hours, 20 hundred hours actually. Uh, and this guy looks like this, which is cool because that means it's starting to get darker sooner now. We're in September, which is great. Okay. Um, if I want to then see more specifically what's in the sky in terms of planets and deep space objects, I need to click for planets. I need to click this planet label button. And as you can see, there's Saturn and Jupiter. And they're out and about at almost 9 o'clock. Uh, let's just go ahead and go to 9 o'clock here on our date and time setting. I also want to see what deep space objects are out there. So right here, this button, as you can see, brings up deep sky objects. Uh, you just click that, and there they are. Okay. So... I'm looking at what's in the sky about 9 o'clock this evening, okay, and I can see looking south, okay, I've got a view between southeast and southwest, okay, for my particular situation, I like looking south, southeast, um, because, you know, I have really great views to the sky in that region, okay, but as you can see, the Milky Way is out, so... You know, great opportunities for wide field astrophotography starting, you know, uh, starting at nine o'clock, um, even maybe at, you know, no, not at eight o'clock. So, yeah, starting, I would say probably the optimal time to start doing wide field would be about uh, 10 o'clock at night, 2200 hours. Um, but if I want to see deep space objects in the sky at this time of night, you know, uh, let's look and see what we have okay um before i get into the objects that you currently see i i would like to say that you know any anything between um you know the horizon and about 45 50 degrees is probably not worth imaging because um as you can see that's the case in in many of these dso's watch what happens to them as I go on into the night they are setting and so that's not going to be very good for your efforts to collect data because they're not going to be in the sky that long and it's it's better if you, you and also you're looking through more atmosphere if you're looking you know uh, from say 0 to 45 degrees up off the horizon um, it's more ideal to select something that's probably 60 degrees, maybe between 60 and 80 degrees up off the horizon, say, such as this angelfish cluster. Um, that is really great because as you can see, it's in a good part of the sky and let's look and see what happens to that as time moves on. You know, I mean, you could image this probably all the way to about oh, 0300 hours or 3 a.m. in the morning. Okay, if you don't, unless you have a lot of trees in this region of the sky, you know. But, I mean, let's look at another example. You know, I, I really love a lot of these targets that are way down below that sort of that, you know, that line where you really shouldn't be imaging because of how low it is in the sky. But if we keep going up, we have the Eagle Nebula, which is M16, which is a great target. That the, has the um, Pillars of Creation in it, and it just makes for, it's just such a beautiful target. So let's see what it does as the night goes on. So we're starting at 10 o'clock at night, or 2200 hours, and let's just sort of advance and see what that does. Yeah, you can see right around you know at probably nine o'clock that's 2100 hours that's probably if you want to get maybe mm, a couple hours of you know imaging it in there you could but again it's at it's really pretty low in the sky so not really worth your your f your time and you know locking that i locking that in as a viable target I would probably go more towards this region of the sky. Let's see here. We have NGC 6823. Let's look and see what that does as time goes on in the night. Okay. Um, 
I've zoomed out here using the wheel on my mouse to, to zoom out so you could kind of get a better perspective where this thing is in terms of its relationship to the horizon. So let's let's go ahead and advance. Um, and yeah, I mean, look at this. I could say you could probably image this target all the way maybe until 0300, maybe 0200 or 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning. So this is what Stellarium affords you. It allows you to, it's just free software. You can't go wrong. And look at the, the, this, these beautiful graphics. It's They're like real-time um, graphics that let you see into the night sky so you can plan your imaging sessions. So that's what I do. Uh, and that's how I use Stellarium. Uh, to plan for imaging sessions. So right now I you know can see you know I already know by looking at my app That it's gonna be a clear night. You know, I already know the moon is waning. It's gonna be about you know, I think about It's about 73 degrees uh, Illuminated uh, Not bad. I think it's supposed to rise around between 1030 and 11 p.m. I, it's more ideal if you can image on a, a new moon or maybe three days before a new moon or three days after a new moon. But, um, you know, if you've got a narrowband filter, you know, pop it in there and, you know, you now you have more opportunities to image, you know. But anyway, uh, this is how I use Stellarium to plan. Um to plan for imaging sessions. Let me show you something else here. There's one other thing I want to show you. Um, this is uh, the search window. You just go over to the side here and you click this little magnifying glass with the star in the middle uh, and say, I want to look for the Lagoon Nebula. So I'll type M8. And then I hit the search button. And as you can see, it brings up M8 there, but you, what you can see, it's not in a good position in the sky. So really, it's not a great target right now. You know, which is too bad because it is a beautiful target. I wish I could be imaging it. I've only got a little bit of data on it because of where it's at in the sky. You know, um, but you know, so use this search window to find things. Let's say I want to find the crescent nebula. So I'll type in NGC. Six triple eight, and which is the uh, uh, NGC designation for the Crescent Nebula, and as you can see here, it is up here. Not a bad part in the sky. There's a lot of great targets in the sky right now. They're just not, you know, they're not down. Uh, they're not down here. <laughs> they're they're more up here, such as in the Crescent Nebula. Now. You know, and then while you're up here, look what else is if it's here to see what else you could be, you know, imaging. Um, I think the Western Veil is a good target right now. So let's look at that. You know, uh, let's see. I think that one is NGC sixty-nine sixty. I could be wrong on that. So I'm pulling from memory sixty-nine sixty. So let's do a search, and yeah, there it is. Yeah, and matter of fact, you got the whole Cygnus loop here if you want to do some wide field stuff. It's just, it's a beautiful target. And so looking here in the Cygnus loop, you got the Western Veil, the Eastern Veil, and you got the whole Cygnus loop right here. This the whole thing is, you know, in the constellation of Cygnus, okay? So if you, you know, right now, and it's, and if we zoom out, using the wheel on our mouse you can see that that's in a pretty low kick good location it's in the southwest region of the sky right now so all right already i'm feeling fired up about doing the uh the western veil nebula or the witch's broom nebula or the veil nebula you know it's known by all those things and i know if i've hit NGC 6960 or the Western Veil Nebula, I know of also in that region where the whole Cygnus loop is. And there's so much, so many rich targets in there to, to image or to, you know, it, you know, great data to, to collect, you know. So 
you know this is sort of this is sort of the process I go through for researching targets to image and so I already know going in um, you know that it's in a good part of the sky I know it's it, you know I can I can look at this you know right ascension declination information which matches where it is in the sky and I look at the magnitude so I know that the you know the lower the number the less dim it is the higher the number or I'm sorry I'm kind of reversing that right so the lower the magnitude the brighter the object okay the if you increase the value in magnitude you now decrease um, your chances of capturing uh, unless you have real high magnification okay because the higher the magnitude the dimmer it, an object is okay so again that's called star magnitude okay and it tells you what type of DSO it is this is a supernova remnant right here I mean and just look at all this information Stellarian gives you on this target you know and it's, it's just wonderful for collecting da data so let's just say you know a big target in the sky right now is Comet Neowise right so let me do a search on Neowise. I can just type in the name of the target. Neowise. That's a, a target everyone seems to be going after, and understandably so. You know. Uh, let's see where that's at. Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't really see it in here anywhere. Yeah, I kind of feel like you know. I do have my DSLR. I do have my Nifty Fifty lens so I probably could have captured this video uh, I mean sorry video um, object you know but I mean I got a lot of other targets in the sky here but I I do totally appreciate all the work everyone else has done capturing this beautiful target um, but you know I'm hoping that it'll be in the sky uh, maybe I, I've heard that it'll be visible be you know before midnight I don't know maybe someone can correct me there I know that a lot of the windows of opportunity have been after midnight you know and so I'll continue to keep an eye on that in terms of Comet Neowise's location before midnight not use Stellarium for that um, it it is it is in Stellarium and Stellarium when it in, you know I, it, they're always updating the date the database of objects inside of Stellarium and I think that's why the ver you know the new versions are constantly coming out but uh, anyways the one of the more notable things is if you look here there's here's the moon but if we look at it I can see that it's like looks like almost like a last quarter uh, moon it is waning so it's not gonna you know uh, wash the sky out as much as say a moon that was more uh, you know illuminated uh, but it's something to note something to consider something to work into the equation in terms of maybe I need to be using an, a narrow band filter so I can capture only certain signals of data or you know uh, because the moon's going to be out at this time you know especially if you plan to be imaging you know all the way all night you know just know that the moon is going to be coming up here around oh a little look at that right around 11 o'clock or so just like I I had researched before but um, anyway as you can see Stellarium is just such a great tool to identify and to isolate targets that you you know want to image okay uh, it's but another problem is or maybe an, another downside to all this is there's there's so many options it's you know look at this the soul nebula that's that is another wonderful target look how beautiful this is look at this isn't that awesome look at that um, magnitude is pretty good because it's remember what I said the lower the magnitude the brighter the object right so if if this was you know like a lot of the galaxies that come out in galaxy season you know April on April time frame on are their magnitudes 
uh, are like you know 10 and above which means they're very dim so you're gonna need a very uh, you know high strong magnifications uh, scope to, to have access to those um, targets okay um, but that's that's a whole different cat that's a whole different subject but anyway um, the point of this video or the focus of this video is to, to research targets for imaging and uh, as you can see it uh, it really does a great job with that I, I love it as a tool to help you plan it's a good planning tool for astrophotographers so I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video and um, I just want to um, uh, reiterate the fact what a wonderful tool Stellarium is for if you're, if you're a visual astronomer or if you're an astrophotographer or if you're just someone who wants to learn the night sky. I mean, check this out. You can turn on the constellation button and it it highlights all the constellations in the sky. So this Andromeda galaxy is part of the Andromeda uh, constellation um, you know the triangulum galaxy is part of the tri the, the triangulum uh, uh, constellation I think I said Andromeda galaxy is part of the Andromeda constellation yeah I said that and then as you can see the triangulum galaxy is in the constellation of triangulum which is you know this um, display here so um, you know, and then there's just if you want to, um, if you're you, if you're operating off of an equatorial map, you'd want to use right ascension declination lines. Um, there's Polaris. That's you know that's the star you want to pull a line on, and then you have your right ascension declination lines here. Here you can see. Uh, where the meridian is if you need to wait for an object to go past the meridian so you don't have to worry about doing a, a meridian flip you know all there's it just really helps you in planning in so many different ways um, this is alt this is an alt as grid of course I would turn off your equatorial grid if you're going to go with your alt your um, alt as configuration in the sky for planning like your um, I believe a lot of the mead fork um, go-to mounts you know that would use this type of grid um, to help you determine you know where things are in relation to these alt as grid lines okay um, so anyway I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you found something useful I hope you found it beneficial to your uh, image planning um, in all the videos I do, the hope is that you find something that, that you find the content of, of value that you're you're able to t take something and use it. You know, there should at least be a couple of good takeaways from every video, something that can help you. I know there's a lot of information that I'm communicating, but if you can even just find one thing, you know, and then over time, constantly look at these videos. And then the, that one thing becomes two, and then that two becomes three, and then that three becomes four. You know, then all of a sudden you're really building up your knowledge base, uh, and your depth of knowledge increases significantly because of the content. That's what it's all about for me. If it's doing that for you, that's what I'm hoping. Anyways, that's all for this video. If you are fine, again, if you're finding these uh, the content in these videos of value to you, please like and please subscribe. And I hope everyone is staying well. And um, I hope everyone is staying safe. And I want to wish everyone clear dark skies. Take care, everyone. Until the next video, take care.